Another day, another Japanese cake test. Today we are doing the infamous Uncle Tetsu's Jiggly Cheesecake with a couple of bonuses because they do uh, Madeleines which are slightly similar to the French ones but a little bit of a different shape and I will also be taking you to Custard Puff, King, King Puff Custard something else that we will see later that looks like walnuts that I'm usually highly allergic to. So history wise with these, there's not a whole lot about them. They obviously started in Japan uh, but became really popular in about 2011 when the Uncle Tetsu's brand had expanded throughout the rest of the world and really made it quite popular. Once they opened their uh, Chinese based stores, uh, there were lines around the block and people were paying like, lots of money to get a hold of them and they have expanded even more since then. They have two stores here in Melbourne, uh, one on Swanston uh, where we're going today and they have another one in Melbourne Central where I do believe they do some other desserty type things like a custard and some rusks which is very interesting. These two guys who started this business are probably making bank now. We have cheesecake in our possession. I am very excited. They have given me this massive bag. So what I have is one of the original cheesecakes plus a honey madeleine and a chocolate madeleine, uh, which I will probably name my child honey madeleine at this stage. Why not? Please excuse my odd angles. I am holding my camera very strangely and we are at the back of the church. So I'm in. All right, let's open her up. And I ripped it. Good, good start, good start me. Packaging wise, uh, hard to get into. Here we go. It feels very warm. It has a very gentle cloth on top. I'm very impressed. What I want to see is the jiggle and that's what we're all here for is to see if it jiggles, to see if it wobbles. I was kind of expecting it to be taller. <laughs> People say that about me too. They told me that it will last uh, three days in the fridge and she did advise to eat it cold. Um, it's quite warm at the moment, so I assume it's quite fresh. Is it jiggling? Vaguely. Moving on from the cheesecake, we're going to the Madeleines. Both this cheesecake and the Madeleines also came in a matcha. I'm sorry, uh, it's not worth my time. This is one Madeleine. Here is the other. Had that signature little dome like you usually get in a um, regular French Madeleine. We're gonna go chocolate first. Welcome to the sounds of Melbourne. Um, look, feeling first glance, it's a little dry. Let's split her open. It is very muffin-like. If anything, I would say this is a nice chocolate muffin. Yeah, it's not the best thing I've eaten. It's quite dry. It's very like when you were kind of 10 years old and you were like, I'm gonna make a chocolate cake and I'm only gonna use cocoa powder and not real chocolate. That's disappointing. Next up we have our honey madeleine. Uh, when you're walking up to the store, it has a very strong sort of honey smell coming from it. Obviously there is quite a lot of honey in these. They feel very similar to the chocolate ones in terms of their, I don't want to say dryness because it sounds rude, but dryness. Ooh, uh, they definitely have more of a chewier kind of consistency to them. Hmm, much better than the chocolate one very distinct sort of like honey flavor. Um, I enjoy this. It reminds me of this like Italian biscuit that's very hard. I think my dad lost a tooth on once. But it's that sort of like super honey, overpowering flavor. But in a very nice sort of like spongy, I, get, I dig this. Onto our main event, which is the cheesecake. Uh, and I've learned after last time of um, not being prepared slash being prepared. I brought my own plastic knife, uh, the same one that I got from my Castella. Oh, she's so soft. Yes. Here it is, here we are. Look, it has a lot more jiggle in its uh, cut form. It's very spongy, very nice. I don't want to say it's like wet, but it's very moist. It's very moisture heavy. I'm just gonna... Hmm. Right, so, number one. Everyone told me that this was gonna be very, very bland. Uh, when I ate it, which I agree to to some extent, but very reminiscent of the one that I made in 2009. It has that sort of very light, spongy, um, super moist, and then has that really like nice tang of cream cheese in there. Japanese are mastering things that 
I could consume an entire one of. It's tangy, it's great, will go lovely with a raspberry coolie or something. I could understand when it was cooled down that this would probably solidify a little bit, have a little bit more body to it, and um, you'd probably be able to taste a little bit more of that cream cheese flavor, I guess. I think it lives up to the hype. Now, cost. Here's the issue that I have, is that stuff like this, while it is, yes, very impressive, and I appreciate that it has a lot of history and there is a lot to do in terms of making one, but it's also $18. And for me to spend $18 on a cake that is probably like, eh, a seven inch cake, six inch cake, it's a lot. It's a lot. It's a whole lot. These Madeleines were $3.80 each. I could get a full size muffin for that amount. There is a pigeon closing in and it's getting so good. No. Excuse me. Hey. None of that, thanks. That is cheesecakes and madeleines done. We have one more taste test to do today. A custard puff. It's like a, a baked custard that kind of forms its own shell, very much like a canelé, which are French in those like little kind of jelly mold shaped things. I assume same principle as that. I'm having a very Melbourne moment and I'm sitting on two crates uh, in, a, in an alleyway that has graffiti in it, eating a Japanese influenced food that that's, I'm peaking. That machine is incredible. I would just want to watch it all day. It's like soothing my anxiety. Price wise, a bargain, uh, $2 for four or $5 for 12. So obviously I got 12. They're very pretty. It's a very distinct walnut shape. And if we cast our minds back about two months ago, I ended up in hospital because I ate some walnuts. Do I have a little anxiety? Yes. So we're gonna try. Ow, they're very hot. It's more cake on the outside than it is custard on the inside. Which, not disappointed. Um, I was just kind of ex expecting more of like a, like a pop or an explosion or something. If you have an aversion to eggs, this will not be your friend because it is an egg-based custard, I can tell. And there is that sort of overall kind of eggy, sort of feel and taste to it. If you want to like inject this with something else, then like awesome, go for it. It's not quite a profiterole and it's, I, I don't know what else to compare it to. It's not a profiterole, that's, that's that. Now I can find no history on these whatsoever. Like nothing at all online. They look super cute. Well, that's gone forever. Okay, apparently these have been here since 2015. Uh, so if that's the case, I, include my taste test videos of Japanese influence things because I'm obviously doing nothing new. Stick around if you want to see me try and make some of these things because oh, this one was hot. This one was real hot. Please subscribe if you haven't. Please share and like if you're that kind of person and I will see you in the next one.